Okay, so here we are with lesson number four. And this is the second part of our lesson on circuits. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to attempt to solve some bigger, more complicated circuits. There's a way that we can do this um, that's going to kind of keep things organized for us, and that's to create a chart just like this one, okay, where we have basically each item that's in the circuit, so load one, load two, load three, and then, and then a row for your totals, and a column for voltage, a column for current, and a column for resistance. Okay, This might be really handy, especially if you're analyzing circuits that have like four resistors, five resistors, six resistors. Um, this will be really, really helpful. And, and let's take a look at how we might use a chart like this, given um, a circuit that looks like this. All right. So we want to solve this circuit. We want to determine all the unknown values. So here's our total voltage increase, right? So V total is 12 volts. I've got three resistors. These two resistors are in parallel with each other. And we can see because the current would split to get to these two. And these two, which are in parallel with each other, when taken together, are in series with R1. Okay. We need to populate this entire chart here. And we can start, right, because we can basically pop in R1, R2, R3, and V total. Okay, so we could start that. But let's take a look at this circuit diagram, and let's start working out say what the total resistance is going to be. Okay. So let's find the equivalent resistance first. We know that R2 and R3 are in parallel with each other. So that means that we're going to introduce a new equivalent resistance R4 and we're going to add these two inverses together. So 1 over 25 plus 1 over 35 and that's going to be equal to 1 over R4. So we come to this fourth resistance, this equivalent resistance of R2 and R3 as being 14.6. But we also know that R1 and R4 are now in series with each other because what we've done is that we've found an equivalent resistance for those two that are in parallel and we've replaced it and now R1 and R4 are in series. And here we have 15 ohms plus 14.6 ohms so our total equivalent resistance for this circuit, for this um, resistor is 29.6 ohms. Okay, And so now that we have this, we are well on our way to being able to solve the rest of the circuit. I now know the total voltage that was given to me, and now that I've calculated the total resistance, I can find out what the total current flowing in this battery is. Okay. And that's that the total current is equal to 0 0.405 amps. Now, there's nowhere between the battery and the first resistor, R1, there's nowhere for that current to go. So by inspection, I can say, oh, I know what I1 is. I1 is 0 0.405. And because I know the resistance of I1, or of R1, rather, I can find the voltage through that. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've been able to do. I use the three resistors right here to solve the equivalent resistance of this circuit. And I get 29.6 ohms. Okay, that would have been part of your homework. Solving these different things and putting these different things together from yesterday. Okay, now I also noticed that, oh, okay, well, any single time I have two of three entries, in a in a row, I can use V equals IR to solve for the third. So here I had I total because that was given to me, and I calculated this 29.6. So oh, that was pretty easy. I can calculate 0 0.405. Well, I know that if I've got 0 0.405 amps of current through here, there's nowhere for that current to go before it gets to this one. So the amount of current through here must be the same as the amount of current through here. Okay, so that's why I can write down 0 0.405 because that's how much current I have going through here. And now all of a sudden, because I was given 15 ohms, and because I'm, I've just calculated 0 0.405 ohms, I can find out 
how much potential of this 12 volts this first resistor is using. And it's using a lot. It's using 6.08 volts. Okay. Moving on, what we need to do now is we need to find out um, these other values of voltage. And so we're going to use Kirchhoff's voltage law. And we're going to set up one loop this way. So the current will come through here and we'll travel around and we'll go up through this resistor and then down and back. Right? So this is one loop where current will flow. Of course, the other loop where current will flow is down this way. And so current will go up through here and then come down through this resistor and go around. So that's the second, that's what we're going to do next. All right, so we know that around loop one, we've got 12 volts that are supplied to that circuit. And those 12 volts are used up by V1 and by V2. Well, we already know how much how many volts V1 is using. It's using 6.08, so that means that V2 is going to use 5.92 volts. Okay? We can also go around loop 2 and say 12 is equal to V1 plus V3 because those are the two voltage drops that are in loop 2. And coincidentally, or is it coincidentally, 5.92 volts are also used here. Voltages in parallel are the same. Um, now that we know V3, we also know I or R3, we, we know V2 and we know R2, we can find our last two values of current. The current that goes through um, resistor 2 is 0 0.237 and the current that goes through resistor 3 is 0 0.169. So we can come back up to our original diagram and we can fill in the rest of the chart and this would represent a complete solution. So this is one example. This is one circuit. And there are um, a whole bunch of others in your homework that you can go and try. Um, these are like little puzzles. Um, you've got all the tools. You've got Kirchhoff's laws. You've got resistors in series. You've got resistors in parallel. And you've got V equals IR. And those are the tools that you're going to use now to analyze a circuit. Good luck.